Hello everyone. Good evening. In this video, I would like to discuss about how you have to approach pathology. Okay, while you are going to read for your prof exams. Fine, that is your university exams. So, first of all, uh, it will be. This is going to be a very short video. I'm just going to be crisp and precise about how you should read, how you should approach the subject, what all topics you have to, uh, what to say, give more importance. Okay, and. Uh, how you have to remember or how you can remember things very easily, how you can reproduce those things in exams, everything. So first thing, just remember, um, in pathology, okay, in pathology, we have paper one and paper two. So paper one is GP, that is general pathology along with hematology. And of course, in recent times, you no, know, as per your new topics, we have ethics based question. And in type in paper two, it is mainly, it is one and only systemic pathology. Fine. This is actually the um, overview of the two papers. So, suppose um, I would like to take paper one first. General pathology. In general pathology, the two most important chapter that you have to read is disorders of the immune system. And second two is neoplasia. You have to master these two chapters like anything because there are lot and lot of questions which are coming from these two uh, topics. And the other um, small chapters are what your cell injury with inflammation, cell injury and inflammation, then hemodynamics, hemodynamics, I am not writing completely, okay, just to make it crisp. Then uh, next and miscellaneous chapters like infant diseases. Okay, infant diseases, environmental diseases, okay, and of course, genetics. Once this is done, let us go for the next most important thing, that is hematology. Without hematology or without studying hematology, you can't pass paper one. Because what, compared to general pathology, we have lot and lot of questions. That is, to be frank, out of 20 MCQs, Around 10 will be from hematology or 8 to 10 will be from hematology and the rest of 10 will be from general pathology. Okay. And in hematology, you have RBC, WBC, platelet or bleeding disorders and next is transfusion medicine. Lot and lot of questions are being asked repeatedly. All these are case scenario based questions. Case scenario based questions. So this is the overview of paper 1. How we are going to study one topic or study one chapter? First, remember, always, since you are sitting and preparing for the prof exam, you have to always keep in mind that repeated questions or common questions are always common. So you should first read the repeatedly or the most frequently asked questions. For example, in hematology, you should always, it's like we have something called as a must-read question. For example, iron deficiency anemia, CML, thalassemia, MM, multiple myeloma. Okay. Then next is what? Sickle cell anemia. So these are all like must read questions. Without reading these topics, you can't go for the exam. How you will approach these things? I told you the essay questions, which will be each question will be 15 marks to two questions, 30 marks. This essay based question or the long questions will be always a case scenario based questions. So please remember, always read the clinical features thoroughly for all the essay questions. It is compulsory, whether it is paper one or paper two, for all the essay questions, you should read the clinical features because these clinical features will help you to find the diagnosis. For example, sickle cell anemia and thalassemia, the clinical features are almost the same. So you should know what are the points which differentiate between them for example instead of writing thalassemia you have written sickle cell anemia as their diagnosis you have explained the idiopathogenesis everything then you won't be provided even a single mark out of 15 okay so clinical features are very very important this is how your pattern has been different from the prior what earlier pattern you are like what uh, everything is, is like a clinically okay that is what to say like that is so called the cbme batch okay that is competency based medical education so you have to be uh, <laughs> Train yourself, okay, you have to be competent enough to answer such questions. That is the first important thing. The second thing, don't read each and every line because you are not going to write all those things in your exams. In iron deficiency anyway, you should know what are the causes, okay, causes. You should know what is the pathogenesis because iron is deficient, what are the 
um, problems encountered by the RBCs. Next, next is clinical features and as far as hematology is concerned, you should know the peripheral smear findings in all disorders, whether it is a, what I say, a short knot or an essay or whatever it may be, you should know in detail about the peripheral smear and you should also know how to draw the peripheral smear also, especially of the common conditions like CML, AML, iron deficiency, megaloblastic, you should know how to draw a structure of a neutrophil, eosinophil, everything is compulsory. Okay, so read the important questions. Okay, then you go for the at last only you have to go for the small small questions, MCQs, one liners, everything. First, always, first, always you have to uh, focus on what the important questions. Okay, important or the frequently asked questions. When this is done, so that finishes almost about uh, the paper one. As I am uh, telling again, remember always read the points. Iron deficiency anemia means. Uh, you just concise the whole iron deficiency anemia into 10 to 15 points and this 10 to 15 points we are going to further elaborate in detail we are going to further elaborate in detail we are going to further elaborate in detail when it comes to your exams in paper 2 okay it is actually the real pathology in paper 2 it is a system out of all the system the most important is cvs breast mgt fgt that is male and female genital tract lungs then comes git see actually in paper 2 there is nothing called as a paper weightage okay only from cvs it will be asked more no every year it changes so all system these systems i am like in order of priority first you read cvs breast mgt fgt lungs git then comes the other chapters like liver cns skin okay and rest of the chapters okay this is very very important you should um, what to say follow these things okay in cvs again Whenever you study an essay question, myocardial infarction, aortic dissection, in breast, carcinoma of the breast is a very commonly asked question. You should know how the carcinoma of the breast will clinically present with, how a seminoma of the testis will clinically present with, how a squamous cell carcinoma of the lung will clinically present with, how a liver cirrhosis will present with, how a hepatocellular carcinoma will present with, all these things, how an actual meningitis is present with. So, whenever you read all the essay questions which are very repeatedly and frequently asked in your university exams, please make sure that you are reading the clinical features of that. Once you are uh, reading the clinical features, it will help you to not only find the diagnosis but you can also write those things okay you can answer many questions and what to say you can also uh, uh, write those points in your essay or short note questions and remember as far as path is concerned uh, this should be the way you have to present your answers number one etiology and the most important is pathogenesis the third is gross and histopathological features whether you know gross or not for example in carcinoma every carcinoma you will write hemorrhagic necrosis on cross-section histopathology example hyperchromasia increased nucleus cytoplasm it is not possible to read everything okay it is not possible to remind everything but you can remember certain hallmark features for example samoma bodies means papillary carcinoma of thyroid okay then collex nerve bodies means granulosa cell tumor of the ovary Fine. Breast carcinoma, we have what in the lobular carcinoma institute, we have the Indian file pattern. So there is a certain appearances, okay, salt and butter appearances, okay, uh, salt and pepper chromatin in neuroendocrine tumor. So each have some certain fancy names are there, okay, F fancy names are there. Just remember that names. Once you write an exam, you can just put them in a box or you can highlight using a different color. Okay, it's not possible to re remember each and every point about that is each and every histological or histopathological or gross features in all conditions. But all those fancy names, okay, you remember using a mnemonic or something and you just highlight those in exams. Fine? And if possible, if possible at the last, uh, it's not must, you can write clinical features. But remember, in short notes or essay, now everything is being, case scenario based questions are being asked. So, you should read a topic along with the clinical features so that you can make a right diagnosis and you can elaborate rest of the things. I hope you are clear with this. Okay, so please be precise and concise while reading for your university exams. You are not, our aim is to get good marks in your university exams. So, at that time, you should be able to you have a lot and lot to read so within a short period of time how to read smart read the essential points only the wonder points you read refer pictures for pathogenesis and all you can go for flow charts and the cycles or the pictures or the diagrams beautiful diagrams which are mentioned in the robins okay you can so that you can remember the visual memories you know uh it's always predominant one so you can you um, prepare things uh, like that and you can uh, do well in your exams okay this is just an overview of how you have to prepare for your upcoming exams thank you okay and uh, any questions you can contact me in this number fine 
seven zero one two four six double zero eight zero. Anytime, with you can introduce yourself and you can just ask any regarding any queries. Thank you.